Good morning. Uh, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of this program, Law Across the Sea. Uh, and today we're going to talk about current events. We're going to talk about immigration law. And uh, the title of this program is True or False? Immigration Issues in the 2016 Election. And uh, today my guest is Claire H Hannes. Uh, welcome, Claire. Thank you. Good it's to nice see to you. be here. Good to see you. Uh, Claire practices immigration law at Damon Key, Leon Kupchuk, and, and Hastert and uh, has been very active in various aspects of immigration law here in Hawaii. And I'd like to just briefly tell me how you got involved in immigration law because it's, 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 a, it's kind of a, it is a specialty. It is a specialty and I actually went to law school because I specifically wanted to practice immigration law. Um, prior to coming to Hawaii 20 plus years ago, I lived in Arizona and I worked for a nonprofit that uh, assisted Central American refugees and I uh, did a lot of volunteer work with those refugees and was really, really moved and impressed with the immigration attorneys I met who were doing mostly pro bono and some nonprofit work uh, assisting people. And I, I love immigration law because it combines direct services with international issues, with domestic policy, uh, and with helping people. And so that was it. It was the one area of law that really nicely wrapped up all of my interests. Yeah, it's it's nice that attorneys can help people. It's, yeah, it, yeah, it, it, feel, it, feel, it feels good when you can get someone to that next level. Do, do something positive. It feels good, yeah. yeah. Now, today we're going to talk about something that, that's been in the news, although with the recent uh, uh, disharmony in the uh, various discussions, uh, it, 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 it has not uh, been a, a strong focus last night for, right. for the... the uh, uh, town hall meeting of the, the presidential candidates, but they, they did talk about it, okay? Uh, and, and I think it will come more into focus again uh, because I see lots of news reports from people saying things that I've heard that I don't know if they're true or false. What are some of the issues? I mean, it, it, it is a big issue right now in the, in, in the election, right? The immigration uh, uh, controversy, there's various things that have come up. What are some of those issues? Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, immigration issues um, have um, really reached a kind of boiling over point, largely because of Congress's uh, inability to, uh, to, to deal with them up until this point. We have an issue where we have 11 plus million undocumented immigrants. There's been the last time there was a, a big uh, comprehensive immigration reform package. It's been 20 plus years. Um, there's a, a lot of pressure from uh, you know, different forces to um, put forward a plan to address uh, the issues of the immigration issues that our country has. And Congress, because of the just the deadlock and the, the, the inability of Republicans and Democrats to uh, reach any kind of consensus on the issue, um, and I think a lot of it is just, it's very political, not wanting to come up with any kind of solution uh, under, under the Obama uh, administration has, um, has really led to um, a crisis. And I, I think it's also an issue in this you can really look at historically that um, in times, and not just in the United States, but many other countries, you know, when the economy is really faltering, um, as our economy has been, um, people want an easy, an easy group of people to blame that on. And um, immigrants, and especially undocumented immigrants, are, are a really, really easy target. And so they've been used as, as political pawns um, you know, by both parties, but I would argue more by the Republicans. Right, right. Well, I've heard that. I've heard that immigrants take jobs away from Americans, and maybe that's what you're saying, is that because of the economy right now, right. Where, where things are not strong. And I, I mean, I, I, I see that every day, I, uh, practicing law, right. uh, the conflicts that arise, a lot of them are due to, to money and right. not having it. And right. Some people don't have it right. and some people do. But I mean, it, it, it says, you know, I've seen that one of the issues is that immigrants, not just illegal immigrants mm -hmm. or undocumented immigrants, uh, I'm not sure what, what the difference is, but I ha I've ha take jobs away from Americans. Is 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 that? Uh, I mean, is that a um, uh, is that a true or a false statement, or is it somewhere in between? Well, I, I think we need to really break down the terms. A lot of immigrants are Americans. 
Right. I mean, in in Hawaii, twenty percent uh, or so um, of, of um, U.S. citizens in Hawaii are foreign born. Mm -hmm. So we really need to kind of break down the groups of people that that we're talking about. And basically, you know, U.S. citizens are people who were either born in the United States. Anyone born in the United States is automatically a U.S. citizen, or people who have gone through the naturalization process. And you 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 can't just um, skip to that point, you have to go through permanent residency first. And normally it's either three years or five years of permanent residency. And then you have to take uh, a test that involves questions about uh, U.S. civics, uh, which a lot of U.S. citizens, a lot of native born would probably fail, right. um, as well as English. And then you have to go through a very rigorous, again, criminal background check and all kinds of other vetting, make sure that you've paid your taxes, et cetera. So those are the groups of people who become who become citizens. And then we have people who are um, lawful permanent residents um, in, in immigrant um, classification. Um, and those are people who have the right to live and work in the United States you know, indefinitely. Um, but they also, they also need to follow a, a pretty strict set of rules. And for example, if there are um, uh, crimes that are committed by certain, by permanent residents, certain crimes can get you put into deportation proceedings and actually get you uh, removed from the United States. So um, permanent residents have to be, you know, a little careful. Um, and then there's a group of people who are, um, you know, living here and have lived here for a long time, but have no legal status. And those uh, we call um, undocumented immigrants. And there's really two classes of, of these people. Um, one is people who've come lawfully into the United States on visas or through what's called visa waiver program, which is available to uh, citizens of 38 countries. Um, people who come and they overstay. And uh, you know, probably in, in our daily life, uh, we are, are often uh, encountering people who've come and they've overstayed and we just don't know it. Um, our our um, kids might be going to school with kids whose parents have overstayed. We might be doing business. I mean, there's just, uh, you know, there's, there's lots of these people among us. Um, there's also people who've entered the United States illegally. So um, those are the people who are, um, uh, again, the numbers are hard, maybe around um, 11 million. And that's the group of people that gets the most, you know, the, kind okay, of the so, most so there, 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 There's three, or there's four groups, really. The ones that have come in, they become U.S. citizens. Uh, the ones that are not U.S. citizens, but they're here. Lawful permanent lawful, residents, and, right. And then there's some that are out of status. Right. Uh, which I guess, and you're saying those make up the, make up the 11 million. So there's right. really, there's basically... And they're out of status. Three, they either, they either never had legal status in the first place, or they had it, and then they, they lost uh, okay. it because they overstayed. Right. And then there's a whole, there are all these other groups among us um, in the United States who are here on different kinds of visas, um, you know, employment-based visas or student visas, Right, and and so it's it, it's a really complicated alphabet soup of of um, categories. But the the group that's getting the most attention are the undocumented uh, uh, people among us. And um, you know, as far as there, there's been a lot of research um, that shows that they actually this group of people actually contributes far more to the economy than they take from the economy. And even in um, in in Hawaii. Um, I think this figure was the, uh, so the American Immigration Council has a fact sheet just on new Americans in Hawaii that shows that undocumented immigrants pay uh, $31.2 million in state and local taxes. Okay, and there are other taxes that, mm. uh, that, that these people pay into. Many of them do file income taxes, but they're, they're never able to take advantage of Social Security. And they don't, they don't qualify for most state and federal benefits. So the idea that they're taking benefits is that they don't they don't qualify. So they're actually they're actually not. But it's but it's easy to say that 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 they are without without looking beyond that. Some jobs there's there's probably disruption in some sectors. Um, a lot of undocumented immigrants take jobs that frankly U.S. citizens and permanent residents don't want. I'm thinking of uh, you know farm workers um, working in. Um, really, you know, poultry processing plants. Um, not so much here, but on the continental U.S. Um, uh, people working as maids, as domestics, um, you know, n not high paying jobs, not jobs that a lot of U.S. citizens or permanent residents, frankly, have any interest in. Um, so you have to look really um, 
uh, at either industry or industry or you know kind of job by job to see if, if there's disruption or not. So they, they may take some jobs, but those jobs may not be in, people may not be uh, competing too hard exactly, for those jobs. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and they may be doing work in, in that respect that Amer uh, US, U.S. citizens wouldn't want to do. But I mean, how did we get 11 million people here? How did we, you know, that's a, that, you know, you, you mentioned 11 million. When I've heard that, heard that number in, in the speeches of the, the presidents, uh, 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 when they are in the, in, the, in the people that are running for president, how did, how did that happen? Well, it's over a period of a long time, first of all. So some, I mean, I, I have clients who are undocumented and they've been here 20 or 30 years. And they've, um, they've, uh, they're working, they're paying taxes, they have children and grandchildren who are U.S. citizens. And, you know, the, you know people come for, um, you know, for different reasons, but, but generally the reason is to, you know, to, to make a better life. They were living in a place where um, they, they saw no future, they couldn't support their families, and so they made a very difficult decision um, to leave all of that and come to a new place. So that's probably the majority of people who make up these undocumented numbers. Um, but then you also have the, the overstays, right? And actually, um, most overstays in the United States are people who've come from um, the largest single um, region, or Europe. People who come as European tourists, and they don't leave. And we don't really think about them so much because um, they're white, a lot of them, and they kind of blend in, and, and we don't you know, we, we like to paint all these people as, as you know, kind of, the, you know, the brown-skinned Mexicans who, who can't speak English. But a lot of these people are actually, a lot of the um, undocumented uh, immigrants are actually European, Canadian, uh, you know, from other parts of the world that, um, that we s see as more desirable, I guess. Well, you know, go going back to that, um, one of the issues that I've also seen uh, raised in the presidential debates is is that Muslims uh, right. are, are uh, well, first of all, they're pouring into the United States uh, and they pose a threat of terrorism and they have to be, they have to be uh, uh, vetted some way uh, or not allowed to come in and um, what, 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 is, what are the facts about, about that? Well, first of all, there's no group of people that are pouring into the United States. Um, even people who are entering the United States illegally, it's really hard to do to try to, to get across a, a, a very fortified border between the United States and Mexico. Probably easier if you're trying to go through Canada. Um, but the, um, the idea of that, um, that Trump uh, presented uh, early on in his campaign about a, a total ban he talked about um, on Muslims coming into the United States. Um, yeah, got a lot of attention. Probably not a whole lot of attention here because our, the Muslim community in Hawaii is is very small. Um, but it, it's it's been it's been fascinating to to watch the discourse on this. First of all. Um, you know, in addition to it being, um, I think we can all argue um, th or agree that it's um, you know highly discriminatory and probably unconstitutional. Uh, you know, have to go through the courts if if that happens. Um, it's also, I think, it would be an, an impossible proposal because really, again, kind of break down what he's saying. Um, there are, um, how do you determine someone's religion uh, if they don't self-identify? Um, the Ten countries with the largest Muslim populations, um, only one of them, Pakistan, lists the religion on a passport. Only um, two other countries um, keep track of what religion. The, the United States doesn't keep track of what religion. People, you know, yeah. what re and it's fluid, right? It, it it changes. And what is it Muslim? So, so in addition to just the, there would almost have to be like you know a Muslim determination. Uh, and I don't even know how you would do that. You'd have to interview every person who was interested in coming into the United every States. Immigrant. Every immigrant. Every immigrant. Or, or every I think, well, he's talking about, he's talking about it, any, anyone coming into the United States who's not, a, who's not a U.S. citizen. And I suppose he would want to go back and probably relook at the permanent residents who've already been um, uh, determined that they're admissible to come into the United States. I mean, just the, just the logistical 
backlog that this would, would cause yeah. would would be uh, the um, you know people who were the former head of immigration and customs enforcement with Department of Homeland Security have also it, it's just it's 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 completely unworkable and impossible and so I think it's um it's it's really look we've had um, there have been some Muslim immigrants in the United States uh, a handful who've done some very some very bad things. Um, but if someone wants to get into a place and do some very bad things, they will, they will find a way to do that. We can't, we can't fortify, countries can't completely fortify themselves. If a terrorist is intent upon doing some secret mission, they will maybe fail a thousand times, but one, right. one person will maybe pull off the right. terrorist, right. Uh, terrorist right. uh, and then what I found Amen. really sad in, in all of this is the focus on Syrian refugees as this, um, th this huge potential group of terrorists who are, um, who are waiting to come into the United States and, and do bad things. Thankfully, there have been some communities across the United States who've, who've said that they will welcome Syrian families with open arms. And I want to talk about those a little bit more after our break. Okay. Okay, so we're going to take a brief break and then come back and I want to ask you because that did come up in the presidential debate or talk I don't know what it was last <laughs> night thank you very much we'll be right back hello this is Martin Despang I want to get you get excited about my new show which is humane architecture for Hawaii and beyond we're going to broadcast on Tuesdays 5 p.m. here on uh, Think Tech Hawaii Thank you for watching Think Tech. I'm Grace Chang, the new host for Global Connections. You can find me here live every Thursday at 1 p.m. where we'll be talking to people around the islands or visiting the islands who are connected in various aspects of global affairs. So please tune in and aloha and thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. I'd love you to join us every week, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. for Ehana Kako, Let's Work Together. We report every week on the good things going on in our state, as well as the better things that can go on in the future. We have guests covering everything from the economy, the government, and society. See you Mondays on Ehana Kako at 2 o'clock p.m. Until then, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. We are back with Law Across the Sea and uh, we are talking about the immigration issues uh, with Claire H Hannes, uh, the, the immigration issues in the election year. And uh, Claire, it, you know, I, I hear that if somebody is intent on doing bad things and coming into the United States, they will find a way to do it. I, I hear that. Uh, if they're coming in through our borders, it sounds like they uh, just can't walk in. They, they have to take some uh, uh, um, examination before they, they come in. They, they, have, they have to be examined in some way before they come in. They're, 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 they're not just freely passed. Uh, but, but last night on the presidential town hall, uh, there was some talk that we don't have any borders and that Syrians are coming into our country in tens of thousands. Um, and not being vetted uh, as they come in, uh, and should be extreme vetted. Um, I guess my, qu my question is, are Syrians coming into our country in tens of thousands? I mean, there, there, there is a war going on in Syria, and apparently a lot of Syrians would like to get out of Syria, and they've gone to Europe, mostly, right. as I understand right. it. But are they coming into the United States? No. I mean, there's, there's, there's a huge, and anyone who watches the news knows, there's a huge heartbreaking uh, humanitarian crisis um, coming out of Syria because of the war. And um, many European countries have taken in Syrian refugees. And the, you know, the United States, there, you know, there are international treaties that, 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 you know, and obligations that we've signed on to that, that, um, that obligate the United States and other countries to take uh, to take refugees, people who are fleeing persecution. You know, the definition of a, of a refugee or an asylum seeker is someone who's fearing um, uh, facing persecution, past persecution, or, or, or future persecution. And um, of course, the United States has no border with Syria, so but still has an obligation to uh, 
to take refugees from Syria. So the process, the Obama administration has, has set a target for 10,000 Syrian refugees um, for 2016. I think now the talk is maybe raising that um, to 65,000, which is still a, 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 a tiny percentage um, that uh, our European allies uh, have, have agreed to take in. And a lot of these are women and children um, who have no place else to go. Um, there are some communities in the United States who've been very welcoming. Um, there's a, a plan uh, for uh, families now to be able to kind of sponsor refugees and help people on their own, which is, which is great. But the process of someone going from um, fleeing Syria to being determined to be a refugee to then actually be admitted in the, to the United States can take a year or two. And it's, um, it's an extremely rigorous process. And first of all, someone who is um, really intent on doing harm to the United States, I don't think is going to go through the process of trying to come in as a refugee. It's, just, it's, it's easier to try to find another way. Um, and if, if anyone wants to read more about kind of the, 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 the really um, detailed lengthy process that someone has to go through, um, the screening process for coming into the United States, the White House has a, uh, an infographic screening process that goes on for page and page and page. It talks about, first of all, the person has to be identified by um, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. As a, as a refugee, so that's the first step, and then there are many many different um, you know background checks, security checks, um, medical checks that have to be done before the person is then allowed to enter the United States. Um, could someone um, game the system? Sure, um, but highly unlikely. And again, if someone is intent on doing harm, this wouldn't be. It takes I too think long. the best. It takes too long. Yeah, it's not the best way to do it. Not what the way to get immediate results. Right. And we've seen also in, in communities where there have been um, large you know, groups of, of immigrants come, that oftentimes these, these immigrants, because they're so hardworking, they want, they realize that, that, that the opportunity to resettle in the United States is a really, you know, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. And they work so hard to make better lives for themselves, for their community, and for their children. And I was thinking just um, uh, the, the farmer's market, there's a, a, a Laotian family that I often buy vegetables from. And um, the parents came as refugees um, from Laos in the early 70s. Um, the five kids all work at different farmer's markets throughout um, the state. And the grandchildren are in college now. now the parents never had the opportunity to go to college. I'm sure they didn't even finish high school. The kids came to the United States, they finished high school, but they worked and that was it. But the grandchildren, that next generation, um, and they're, they're picking and providing, um, you know, the vegetables that we, so, you know, so again, we all benefit. Imagine, imagine Chinatown without Chinese. I know it's hard in Hawaii because so much of Hawaii is built on. on immigration, but we talk so much about what immigrants take. We don't talk about what immigrants contribute. Wouldn't it be great to have a Syrian restaurant in Hawaii? We ha don't have a whole lot of Middle Eastern food here. It could really um, in, uh, benefit our, our community. And I also hear you saying that there are some, uh, some communities in the United States that want refugees yeah. that, are, that, are, yeah. that, that are, not, are, are willing to take them in and maybe see a benefit. Refugees and, and, and immigrants. They're welcoming, they're welcoming Mexicans and Central Americans too because they've lost so many, the, you know, in, in a lot of small towns throughout the continent, they've lost a lot of their population and they see um, the benefits that immigrants, not just from the tax base, but also just, you know, commerce and the economy, you know. They, um, I, I represent a lot of immigrants who don't have legal status, who have businesses. And they're hire, they hire U.S. citizens. So the, the level of, of innovation um, and smarts that these people bring, and again, ability to, to work really, really hard because they realize that they have something really special that a lot of us, a lot of us here take for granted. You know, uh, and that brings me to the question, I mean, are they trying to perpetuate their uh, prior lifestyle from their home country, or are they are they are they not ag adopting American, whatever our American lifestyle is? Are they trying to fit in? Are they speaking English? The, the, well, these, it's, these yeah, folks? it's. I mean, you have to always be careful not to not to generalize too broadly. Um, 
I mean, I think most immigrants really want to assimilate. They, they, they want to be a part and feel a part of, of the community here. They want to be able to um, communicate with their children's teachers. They want to be... And that's your experience as an immigration That is, that is, that is my yeah. experience. And I've, I've, I've worked with, yeah, thousands of, of, uh, of immigrants over the years. Um, for a lot of people, though, the reality is it's really hard um, to, to learn English when uh, you haven't, when your own education has been disrupted because of war or because of socioeconomic reasons. And you come here and you're, you're, you know, these people are working multiple, multiple jobs and they're having, you know, they don't have the, the, the luxury um, to go to a, a, an, an English class that's available through some of the community education programs. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, it, some people do, a lot of people don't. Um, so, so that, that generation is often, but looking at my own, the, my own immigrant family experience where my great grandmother you know, she came when she was young, but English was not ever her best language, right. right? And that's just, again, that's that's normal. I think if most of us go back in our own family histories, we'll see, unless we're native, that's that's probably where we all came from. And you give, you know, give it a generation or two and look at the advancements. They assimilate. Is, they is they do. Look at those advancements. Now, I, I also, I just want to talk a little bit about about Mexico because that has been been a focus, not mm -hmm. not Canada. Right. which I've gone across that border quite easily okay. many times, but, but Mexico, and uh, there is um, talk about a lot of illegals coming across the border uh, from, from Mexico uh, uh, and um, criminals. Uh, I think uh, criminals, murderers, and drug lords are pouring into our country. And with, rapists. With, and rapists Trump, right. were right. one of the uh, right. things that came up last night in in the town hall is that is that okay, so what, what, what are the what are the facts is so, that true so, false? So, the, so the facts as far as immigration and crime um there are almost twice as many um native born uh people in the criminal justice system than there are immigrants by percentage by percentage it's um three point um yeah the oh, the figures are out here i have it in one of these Fabulous articles here. Oh, this is from the American Immigration Council that had a, a great chart that shows that um, immigrants are less likely than native born to be behind bars by um, three point, okay, this is where my eyes are failing me, 3.3% of native born people are behind bars, 1.6% uh, of, uh, of immigrants. So this, this idea that more immigration uh, whether it's legal or illegal immigration leads to more crime. Um, there, I don't think there are any studies that show that. I mean, you can do studies, I guess, and show lots of different things. But the real research shows that um, increased immigration does not lead to increased crime. Now, there have been some very high-profile cases in the news involving undocumented immigrants who've committed some pretty pretty horrible crimes. And it's almost similar to, you know, you have a handful of, of Muslims who do some really crappy things and then everybody gets painted with the same brush. Very with the, uh, with, with the Mexican and the Mexican-American community. But again, the, the statistical correlation isn't actually there. The United States and Mexico, and remember, a lot of the United States was Mexico not too long ago. So you have you have the, you know these kind of divided families on on La Línea, on you know on both sides of the line. And again, it, the history it, it wasn't it wasn't that long ago that what was a lot of the United right. States was Mexico. Okay, the history goes on. It's not anymore. But you have really what's the largest first world, third world border in the world. And of course, there's going to be tensions. And of course, there's going to be problems. And of course, there's going to be um, uh, people uh, looking to uh, make a better life and people looking to take advantage um, uh, of, of the, uh, you know, the, the appetite we have for drugs in this country. Um, and, and, and what I hear uh, is that a lot of this immigration talk uh, is perceptions. Perceptions of people right. and a little bit of fear. Right. Uh, right of what is unknown. And I, I think 
I'd like you to, to close on that. And, and you agree? Is that basically what I, you I totally agree. And I really think when I think about um, the immigration issue, I think a lot about how um, not too long ago the, the, um, the perception of gays and lesbians um, by so many people um, was really negative because most of them, uh, most people didn't know someone or they didn't realize that they knew someone who were gay and lesbian. And then when they realized that they did know someone, oh, and they're, Attitudes and they're okay. Attitudes change. So the, the ability to, um, to, to get to know someone, to, to feel empathy, to try to, to stand in their shoes makes such a difference. And if we can stop thinking of the world and ourselves as us and them and think about all of ourselves as human beings who want the best for ourselves and the best of our children, I think we'll come a long way in advancing the discussion on immigration. Claire, thank you so much. I appreciate your time today. My and, pleasure. Uh, we are POW for today. Thank you. Aloha. Bye.